it selfish what you're doing? And is it also borderline ridiculous that you're preventing people using public transport, which would be a much better way for people to get on with their lives and, and go to work than other methods that you think are more damaging? Uh, well, well, one of your guests has already um, pointed out a very strong counter-argument, which is the fact that uh, we, are, we are very apologetic about putting ordinary people's lives off kilter while we're doing these protests, but we absolutely guarantee, unless something is done very soon, this climate emergency will put all lives in serious jeopardy. The front page of the, of the Daily Mirror, as you just mentioned, but David Attenborough, one of the most respected people in the world, to be a commentator on the environment, He's finally coming out and being very clear and telling the truth. This is an absolute catastrophic future unless we do something about it now. And just your guest's point about uh, affecting public transport, we actually were very careful about what we did yesterday. We had activists gluing on to a DLR train, but it was right at the beginning of the line with nobody in it. So. You know, it was an inconvenience. Look, you, you, you brought Oxford Circus, one of the main hubs in central London, to a standstill. You know, the, the Mayor yeah. of London, who I've, yeah. I think would largely agree there's an issue with climate change, he would agree on all of those things, but even he's saying that you forced people to get into taxis rather than using public transport. What I don't understand is, if you're going to take away public transport away from people, even if it is for a day, that's not really selling the argument, because they're going home going, well, I need public transport. I need all of those things, and, and your protest yeah. is preventing all of that. I don't understand the logic of what you're trying to do. And, and I, I just explained to you, we, we're not actually stopping public transport, are we? We, we stopped one do, DLR you... train before it had left the station and it was empty. Yeah. Be honest, though, Jamie. There's you, no you other want public transport we're stopping at the moment. Don't yeah. you? That's I'm being the honest, point yeah. of it. Uh, we had another one uh, of the founding yeah, members absolutely. of this City Rebellion. You want to cause disruption, inconvenience, because that's what's got yes. you on our show this morning. Uh, that's what you've got on the front page of the newspapers and being talked about all around the world. What I think isn't clear, well, which absolutely. Adel just said, is what mm. exactly you would like the individual people of London to do, the people of the country to do, and indeed the government to do. Very clearly, what would you like them to do? Very clearly, thanks for asking. Uh, we have been very clear about our three demands right from the beginning. The first one is that the government must tell the truth by declaring a climate and ecological emergency, working with other institutions to communicate the urgency for change. The government must act now to halt biodiversity loss and reduce greenhouse gas emissions to net zero by 2025. And the most exciting one of all is the government must create and be led by the decisions of a citizens' assembly on climate and ecological justice. Unfortunately, the governments around the world, and our government as well, they are compromised. The democratic system, anyone who's watching Brexit at the moment, the democratic system is at fault. We don't think that the actual current political system is capable of dealing with this greatest threat of all time. So, in fact, a citizens' assembly chosen by sortition, so randomly chosen people, when they're given through a deliberative democracy process, so they have a 360-degree understanding of these issues, they can be trusted much better than people in political situations right now. So, so, That's why our three demands are so fundamentally important. And how do you achieve that? By gluing yourself to Jeremy Corbyn's house. I mean, he's actually a, a, a supporter, uh, and, and you've annoyed him. I mean, he came out of the house yesterday, didn't want to talk to the protesters. You've annoyed one of your strongest allies. What, what do you achieve by gluing yourself to someone's house? I just don't understand. Good. OK, so uh, he actually, his reaction has been really interesting. He's now agreed to have a meeting with us. Over 300 people have been arrested, mainly elderly people. All the young people who are coming forward to be arrested were shoved aside by all the elderly. And the elderly were saying, you have your life in front of us. It will be an honour for us to be arrested instead. And um, what you've got is a situation where we don't think that any party political organisation is going to be able to deal with this. The fact that Jeremy Corbyn has agreed to meet with us is fantastic, but really I think the finger should be now pointed at the government. We have made clear demands and we have asked for a meeting. We've, we've written hand-delivered uh, hand letters to the government. Please meet with us. That's one of the first things that you okay. can do for us to call off this demonstration. So they should be actually acting themselves. Right, so a citizens' assembly, my mind boggles about how you're going to put that into place when, as you pointed out, the problems that are being caused by trying to deal with Brexit. But leaving that to one side for a moment, the UK has taken a lot of steps, maybe not the right steps in your view or as quickly as you'd like to see, yes. but it has moved and taken steps compared with many other countries around the world to try and tackle this problem. So I think that maybe yes. it's harder than you think to make this change. 
OK, it's a very good point. Uh, we are not in a, for a, a moment suggesting this is an easy change to make. But we have to get the perspective very clear. Unless we make these changes, we are looking at an absolutely catastrophic future for our younger generations. When you frame it in the idea of an emergency footing like the war, then obviously we can change overnight if we have the will to do so. When we realise the threat of fascism through the Nazis, factories that were making prams became factories that made spitfires. That same kind of ingenuity and innovation and courage that this country is famous for can be put towards making the changes and transformation we desperately need to be able to give our children and grandchildren any possibility of a decent future. Okay. And so we can achieve that. And that's, that's why we are taking the steps we're, we're taking. Okay. You make a passionate case. Uh, thank you very much for talking to us this morning, Jamie Kelsey Fry, uh, one of the coordinators of the Extinction Rebellion.